Hey there folks and welcome to another episode in the Geology 101 Physical Geology video series. I am Geology Professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me. Today in episode 24 we are going to look at how we describe the orientation of rocks in three-dimensional space using terms you might have heard of before like strike and dip. See if we can make heads or tails of this. Uh, in the next episode what I'll do is show you actually how we measure strike and dip with a compass called the Brunton compass and maybe we'll even show you some of the new ways to use that using your phone. Um, as always this video series is modeled after my college courses the same curriculum the same content um, pretty much everything I do here at the college. So let's go ahead and get right to it. So remember last time we talked about just the ways in which rocks deform. They can behave brittily, they can behave ductily. In future episodes we'll explore that a little bit further with faults and folds. But today the critical concept we want to look at is how to describe the orientation of a body of rock in three-dimensional space. So many of the rocks we look at tend to be planar objects. So I'm going to start here with the big webcam uh, and then we'll go to some slides here in a second. So I have here a slab of rock, a planar uh, slab of rock. Doesn't matter what type of rock it is, but many of our rocks, sedimentary and foliated metamorphic rocks, present themselves in this way. So think about how you would describe the orientation of this rock right here. And words I commonly hear from my students are things like it's level, it's flat, it's uh, even. Uh, but the best word probably to describe this this rock body right here, this planar rock body, is that it's horizontal. It's oriented horizontally. Okay, that should make sense to you, just the way like your waiter carries out your meal and drinks when you're at a restaurant. Let's look at a different rock orientation and see how we might describe it though. So now if I orient the rock this way, how would you describe it? And my students often say things like it's up and down, it's straight, um, but the, probably the best term here, if we use horizontal for the previous orientation, vertical would probably make the most sense here. This rock is oriented vertically. This planar slab of rock is oriented vertically. Now I'm just going to tweak one little thing and see how you might describe it. So now the whole face of the rock is facing you, but the rock is still vertical, right? So I can kind of rotate this vertical slab of rock around an axis and it's still vertical. It's vertical here, it's vertical here, it's vertical here, but now there's an orientation, right? This this little edge, this vertical plane is, is uh, trending or has a direction to it when we think about the compass. So that's something to consider. Horizontal is horizontal. It doesn't matter if you spin it around. Vertical though, there is like a direction that that, plane, that vertical plane tends to uh, intersect three-dimensional space. So now let's look at our final way we might describe a rock body because you know sometimes rocks are horizontal, sometimes they are vertical, but most often we see rocks that maybe look something like this. They're tilted okay or inclined or students use words like diagonal or uh, sideways so the best word here might be inclined or tilted those are words we typically use in geology so notice I can present this slab to you here okay but I can also change it a little bit it's still tilted now so these adjectives we're using aren't very useful we need a way to define direction we need to a way to define um, angles to some degree. Notice this one's at a fairly small angle, but I can tilt it to a much steeper angle. I can even take it to uh, another angle, so it's tilted the opposite way. So here it's tilted in one direction, but here it's tilted in the opposite direction. So we need terms to describe these. So let's go through how we actually do this. Let me go ahead and shrink myself back down. I'll just be the head in the corner. And let's look at these. The way we use these is we use some terminology here. And let me just go through the terms, then I'll show you some examples and some visuals that will help it make a little bit more sense. So the strike. The strike is the compass direction. So it has a you know northeast southwest component to it. Compass direction of a horizontal line on an inclined plane and let me actually zoom myself back bigger again so what we really mean when we say strike direction is if we have a tilted rock body like this let's see if I can do this with two hands and if we envision a horizontal plane intersecting this tilted plane that would make a line 
So the line is the strike. It's where a horizontal plane intersects this tilted or inclined plane. When two planes intersect, not only do you get an angle, but you get a line. You know how sometimes people say they, they refer to faults as the fault line? Like, oh, the San Andreas fault line runs right through this shopping mall. Well, what they really mean is that the fault itself is a planar surface. It's intersecting the ground, which is another horizontal plane which is another planar surface and the relate the intersection between the surface the ground and this fault plane in this example would create a line so it's this line running in some direction like the way i'm sitting right now in my office this direction is west to east west is uh, towards you east is towards me okay so that's the concept behind strike and i'll get I'll, again I'll, I'll explore this a little bit further uh, let me shrink myself back down again so the other concept that goes with strike is something called dip, how much that angle is tilted. So think about that horizontal plane again and that tilted plane. What angle exists between those two planes? If it's vertical, if the bed of rock is vertical, then the dip is 90. If the bed of rock is horizontal, then the dip is zero. There is no dip. But we can have anything in between there. So our dip number is going to range from 0 to 90 degrees. And the relationship between the dip direction and the strike direction is always a perpendicular relationship. So if we have a rock that's striking, let me go back to maybe the big view again. This is highly visual. Um, so if we have, again, in my office, this rock is striking east-west. But if I add some tilt to it, in this case, now it's dipping in this direction. If a drop of water fell on the slab, it would run down the slab and in this direction. And here in my office, that direction is south. So the relationship between the strike, east-west in this case, and the dip direction is always perpendicular. If we have an east-west strike, we either have to have a south dip or it might be dipping the opposite direction, which would be a north dip. So that's the relationship between strike and dip. So with the strike and dip symbol we use on the geologic maps, the long line is the strike. Okay, so the strike is shown here. So in this case, it would be a northwest to southeast strike, assuming north is up. The dip direction here would be to the northeast. And then we have the little angle here. So it's 40 degrees. It's tilted down from the horizontal, 40 degrees. We don't put the little degree symbol here again because um, it's understood. You don't, you don't need any units here or the little degree symbol. So that's the strike and dip symbol that would be used um, as an example here. And then down here again, I have this other example where we are looking at a sequence of, I guess, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, different sets of rocks from pink up to red, oldest on the bottom, youngest on top. So superposition is working here. And these are all, let's say, beds of sedimentary rocks. Maybe the blue is a limestone, yellow is a sandstone, purple is a shale. Um, and so in the top view here, the top of the box is our map view. And that's where the symbols are going to go. So this would be um, a strike and dip symbol showing that the rocks are striking in this direction, probably north-south if that's the way this box is oriented. And in this case, they're dipping to the right or to the east at 28 degrees. 28 degrees is this angle right here. It's the angle between the horizontal surface and this tilted plane of rock. So we have a 28 degree angle right here. And in fact, if we put strike and dip symbols on all these units, they would all look the same. It'd be the same on the blue and the yellow and the purple and the red. So again, uh, we have to think in three dimensions. So this is the geologic map view, the top view. This is the cross section view or the side view, which nicely shows us the dip of the rocks. And then we have this third dimension over here. And so we can collectively see all three uh, sides or dimensions of these tilted planar rock bodies. Okay, so how do we, here's another way to kind of look at it. I like this graphic nicely because it actually puts these planes into perspective. So let's imagine this yellow plane of rock is a, a bed of sandstone or something sticking out of the ground, right? So you can see this is a three-dimensional block diagram. Um, if we have a horizontal plane shown here by this blue line, I couldn't draw this if I wanted to, 
Um, notice that the horizontal plane intersecting our bed of sandstone in yellow, that defines the strike. So there's our strike. Okay, Our strike line runs from in this direction, whatever that is on the compass. And then our dip direction would be a vertical plane intersecting that strike. And so the dip direction here would be, in this case you can see the dip is to, in this case, to the left. So the dip direction is this way. Imagine a drop of water falling on this slab of sandstone. And it, yes, it would move down, gravity, but it would also be moving in this direction shown by the red arrow here, the dip direction. So this is another graphic that might be helpful. So we need a way to define direction. And we've already used, you know, northeast, southwest, which is good. You could use northwest, northeast. <coughs> Excuse me. This is, this is okay. And at, at a first level, this is probably fine. Um, and you can even go a little further with this and define, you know, north, northwest, north, northeast. So you can start dividing the compass rows up into as many little arrows and directions as you want to. But ultimately, it's not that accurate. I mean, what's the difference between, you know, north and northeast? Well, it's a 45 degree angle, right? It's a 45 degree range of values between north and northeast. So we need a better way to do it. And so the way we, we do this is by using an azimuth. So instead of thinking of things as directionally north and east and southeast and northwest, we actually break the compass rows up because it's a circle into degrees, 360 degrees in a circle. We start at north, which is essentially zero, and we rotate clockwise around the compass rows. And each little unit there is a different degree of a, a bearing, of, of a direction, an azimuth bearing. So notice that east is 90, south is 180, west is 270, and by the time we're back to 360 or north, we've completed that full circle there. So this is a more precise way of doing it. Rather than saying, oh, the rocks are striking northeast, you could say, well, the rocks are striking, you know, at 36 in azimuth of 036. Okay, so actually being a little bit more specific. We're not going to go to that level here in Geology 101, but realize that, you know, practicing geologists or as you get into more advanced courses in geology, uh, using this type of uh, quantification for strike and dip is important. So the symbols we use to show the orientation of beds, and this mainly applies to sedimentary rocks. We've already talked about this top one here, tilted beds, rocks that are not horizontal, rocks that are not vertical, but are something in between. So we use this classic strike and dip symbol here. Here's a symbol you might see because this designates rocks that are actually vertical. And then remember the long line here of this symbol is the strike line. So you can imagine that rotating around. Maybe the rocks are... Uh, striking, they're still vertical, they have a vertical dip, but they're striking maybe north-south. In that case, the long line would be running up and down on the page. If it was east-west, they would be running uh, across the page this way. Horizontal beds uh, have no direction, so we just use this symbol here, just kind of a simple, like, little, like a little bullseye kind of symbol there. And then if the rocks have actually been flipped over, so they have been tilted, beyond 90 degrees and are now upside down. They are overturned. That's what we call an overturned bed. And that's shown by this symbol here. So the little dip line still shows the direction in which it dips, but it has been flipped over and rotated into that dip direction. So it's rotated past 90 degrees. So these are some other symbols um, you may see if you get if you get a little deeper into this. Um, okay, so let's do an assessment question here to round out this episode here. And hopefully this has made sense to you. It's a, a, a complicated concept to teach. Hopefully the visuals helped a little bit. So let's say we have a sandstone bed which strikes northeast southwest and dips 53 degrees to the northwest. Which one of the following symbols is the correct map symbol. So I give you six different options here. So go ahead and pause the video if you need a second to digest this and think about it. Okay, and let's go ahead and assume here that north is up on this map, wherever this map is that we're plotting this map symbol. Uh, so if north is up and we have something striking northeast southwest, that means we're going to need a line that's oriented in a northeast southwest direction, which means A makes sense and E makes sense. F and D, that's for horizontal beds, that's for vertical beds. B and C have a northwest southeast 
strike and so those don't match the data we collected so we're either going to be with A or E so now we're looking at the dip direction A shows a dip to the southeast and E shows a dip to the northwest our data that was measured in the field says that it dips to the northwest therefore E is the correct answer down here. How'd you do on that one? Hopefully pretty well. So what we'll do on the next video, I, gen I don't do this in the Geology 101 class, so it's a bit of a bonus. We, we cover strike and dip. They do some things in lab with boxes and just kind of visualizing things in 3D, but I don't actually have them go outside and measure strike and dip with a Brunton compass or some sort of instrument. I do that in the 102 class. But just for fun, I think I'll include a special episode or lesson, if you will, in the next video that will cover how we measure strike and dip. I'll start in the lab showing you how the Brunton compass works and we'll just you know set up a slab of rock in the lab and measure it. And then I'll follow that up with a video I've already uh, filmed out in the field in Great Basin National Park where I'll actually measure the strike and dip of a rock body or planar rock body out in the field. So thanks for your support of the channel. Hopefully this episode and lesson was helpful to you and we'll see you next time. Take care.